Welcome to another scriptural study. In this scriptural study video, we will be exploring how the true scriptural 13th month exposes the equinox deception. As we continue to learn from Yahuwah alone to teach us how to number our days. With his three witnesses that work in perfect celestial harmony in the Shamaim, which reveal his appointed times, new moon days, and Sabbaths. As always, please ensure your computer monitors are set on full screen mode. And please feel encouraged to stop the video at any time to further focus on the scriptural passages and associated information being shared. In this a scriptural study video, we will explore the evidence on how the true 13th month of Yahuwah further exposes the equinox deception, let alone the undeniable evidence on how men and their world religions hide the true scriptural 13th month of Yahuwah. This presentation is organized under three categories, with the first section sharing information on what the equinox deception actually is, and is there only one true scriptural 13th month of Yahuwah, as compared to the 13th month scenarios of world religions. Furthermore, how is the pagan Gregorian calendar designed to hide the 13th month of Yahuwah. Section 2 is dedicated to sharing the scriptural, empirical witnesses that the Word does indeed speak of in regards to a 13th month. From the book of Yazekiel. And finally, Section 3, which will provide undeniable witnesses on why the 13th month further reveals man's equinox deception, and why a wristwatch and or clock has three hands to tell time, just as the stars, which are the third witness on the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah, as some consider the stars to be the second hand, in which with Yahuwah's celestial clock, the stars themselves provide far greater and amazing minute details than what any man-made timepiece ever created could ever do. Much more on this later. And finally, the last and very important item in the third section of this presentation is why knowing the name which is above all names can help anyone better understand how the true 13th month of Yahuwah further exposes the equinox deception. We were first introduced to the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah over 15 years ago and started sharing scriptural study articles 10 years ago via our email address and then four years ago started creating and releasing scriptural videos from outside in creation on YouTube with this scriptural subject matter, with the celestial alignment of the sun, moon, with the stars. In order to understand how Yahuwah alone could teach us to number our days. Let us now get started on section one with what the equinox deception is. There are only two times in a 365.25 day solar sidereal year when the sun shines its light in a nearly equal amount of daylight and darkness. These events are referred to as the vernal and autumn equinox. The word equinox is derived from two Latin words, equus, which means equal, 
which in this case of equal light and equal darkness is not astronomically true. And finally, the Latin word nox, which means night. Think, since when did Yahuwah, the father of lights, say or state to anchor his first day of the first month and or any day of the year to a shadow? He didn't, did he? Have you ever personally attempted to determine the vernal equinox on your own, without the devices of man? If you indeed have attempted this on your own, you would immediately admit it is impossible to do without the world's tools of man. And thus why Moshe did not need any devices from man to determine the first day of the first month. He did not need the vernal equinox as an anchor to determine the first day of the first month because he had the scripture with the sun, moon, with the stars. Moshe left all man-made timing devices behind when he left Egypt to walk in Yahuwah's time because he desired to do the will of Yahuwah and not the will of man. But, regrettably, people all through time have been deceived by world religions into building religious sites and or temples that are aligned and anchored to the sun's shadows on the vernal equinox. Yes, the land indeed is filled with idols, and the people in world religions bow themselves to the work of their own hands, which their fingers have made for the vernal equinox. And yes, anchor their calendars to them. Even to this very day, world religions ensure this abomination is followed everywhere, getting everyone to measure the shadows and darkness cast it off by their obelisks, known scripturally as pillars. Read why in Yahzekiel chapter 8, why Yahuwah, the Almighty One Himself, considers all of this age-old traditional world religious activity an abomination. And understand scripturally why so many follow the beast today. Because man and his world religions align and anchor their pagan festivals to the vernal equinox, don't they? Just like the crescent moon Jewish world religion has done, aligning and anchoring their first day, first month, to the vernal equinox. And, of course, all of the website offshoots that follow the same path towards measuring the shadows. And to think, even conjunction moon believers can't be left out following the beast, along with the full mooners that have either been pulled consciously and or unconsciously in being part of the beast's equinox deception. And each of these world's groups will say they only are the ones that have it right. Well, the truth is, they can't all be right, can they? But the facts are this. They are all together as one, measuring shadows and darkness with man-made obelisks and pillars. Isn't this part of what world religious coexistence is all about? And regrettably, some of these world religions and some of these offshoot websites, from a non-scriptural standpoint, request exuberant financial fees for their calendars, let alone accept financial donations. Furthermore, the equinox deception exposes these two witness only calendar models as they together as one only measure the sun and moon to tell time which is a non-scriptural approach as well because isn't it true that the celestial clock and calendar of yahuwah measures time with three witnesses working in perfect celestial harmony with the sun moon and stars and hallelujah it is free for anyone who desires to have the father of lights 
teach them how to number their days. Because scripture is laced with the guidance to tear down the altars and pillars of men in order that we never ever bow down to their pagan deities. Because haven't we had enough of Babylon changing times and law? These two witness-only calendar models known as solar lunar-only calendars are non-scriptural and are nothing new under the sun and thus exposes only part of what the equinox deception is. Isn't it true that we all have been forced fed this non-scriptural 12-month pagan deity system? The question becomes though, are each of us fully conscious and are unconscious of what we have been forced fed to follow? Because the pagan Gregorian system along with its solar lunar offshoots were designed to hide the true scriptural 13th month. So, let us now deep dive into the true scriptural 13th month, as explained in the book of Ezekiel. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 4, verses 5 through 6, the prophet was to prophetically show the future siege of Jerusalem by signs. He was to lie on his left side as a sign of a future chastisement of the house of Yashriel for 390 days, and then his right side as a future sign of chastisement for the house of Yehuda for 40 days, for a total of 430 days. The combined 430 days of Ezekiel lying on his side was a sign representing the future amount of years a day for each year that the house of Yashriel and Yehuda would experience chastisement for their crookedness, which many have attempted to plot out on a historical timeline. But we are here to discuss if the writings of Ezekiel reveal a 13th month. So what is the starting point? And our scriptural verse that provides where possibly the 430 day count could start proving scripturally that there indeed is a 13th month. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, the 30th year being mentioned, some believe, is either the age of the prophet, when he would be fully of age to become a priest, while others think the date is taken from the time that Josiah renewed the covenant with the people. We are of the belief that this was the age of Ezekiel when he was of age to become a priest, as he would thus be allowed to carry out the 430-day count as per these three scriptural witnesses. Just as King David was inaugurated into his responsibilities at 30 years of age. Just as the Messiah Yahushua started at 30 years of age being as reckoned by law. Whatever the case, the date mentioned here is in the fourth month, on the fifth day of that fourth month, in the fifth year of the sovereign's exile. While the next time stamp in the book of Ezekiel and our end point is revealed in Ezekiel chapter 8 verses 1 through 2 as 430 days later would lead us obviously into the sixth year and in this case the sixth month on the fifth day of the sixth month which obviously would equate to more than enough time for Ezekiel, who was 30 years of age, to lie on his side for 430 days. And, as we know, world religions ignore the true scriptural 13th month. So, let's test this without a 13th month scenario 
to prove what this reveals. So, with the same possible scriptural starting point from the book of Ezekiel, let us number our days. Without a 13th month, just like world religions do. This view highlights the months from years 5 and 6. While summarizing the total months we would have in this count without a 13th month. Acknowledging the empirical and astronomical fact that a lunar month averages 29.5 days, and as well considering the total days left in the fourth month as highlighted in the fifth year, and six month of the sixth year as per Ezekiel's writings. And of course, what would this add up to in a cumulative day count without a 13th month? Again, with the scriptural end date already shared. And as we can see, it does not add up to the required 430 day count, as per the writings of Ezekiel. So, what if we ignored what world religions and their offshoots teach and just followed what the scripture states with a 13th month? And again, tested the 430 day count with a 13th month to see what this would actually prove. Again, starting with the same scriptural starting point. And charted this in the same manner, but this time with a 13th month. With the same scriptural endpoint. And yes, we would clearly see more than enough time for Ezekiel's 430 day count, wouldn't we? Hallelujah for just numbering our days with scripture and foregoing the non scriptural methods of world religions and their offshoots. And why we must only allow Yahuwah to teach us how to number our days and not men and their world religious non scriptural traditions. So, let's test and prove further all things with this possible scriptural starting point, and the same scriptural end point. Because, mathematically, we have already seen there is more than enough time for a 430 day count. But, some start the 430 day count on the 11th day of the 4th month of the 5th year, based on Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 15 through 17. And once again with this approach, there is more than enough time proving a 13th month. And then there are those who start the 430 day count at the end of the fourth month in the fifth year, and prorate out 365 days, with a side reel solar year which would bring us to the end of the third month in the sixth year. Then with a 30 day month would bring us to the end of the fourth month in the sixth year with 395 days with a final 30 day month, bringing us to the end of the fifth month of the sixth year, accumulating to 425 days. And with the remaining five days of the count in the sixth month, six year would bring us to exactly 430 days. Proving, no matter how it is counted, there was indeed a 13th month, just like the book of Yehaziakal states. And what the scriptural math proves with the scriptural 13th month. When one allows Yahuwah to teach us to number our days, and not men with their world religious traditions, with their various equinox deceptions, that are designed to hide the 13th month of Yahuwah which is easily proven in the book of Ezekiel. But it gets even better 
The true 13th month of Yahuwah further proves astronomically man's equinox deception. Because Yahuwah states that he made the moon for appointed times. These are known as the days of gladness, our appointed times which signal the beginning of months, where we shall blow the trumpets, including the ones on our festival day. So, what if you personally do not scripturally read and number your days, let alone test and verify each new moon day outside in creation? Surely, though, from an astronomical standpoint, there must be a way we can prove that night after night reveals knowledge. And you would think that it would be easy to prove that there are 13th month years, even in this day and age, astronomically, right? Hallelujah that it's not hard at all to prove how many full moon events we have each year, is it? As we did indeed have 13 full moon events in 2015, and will again in 2018, let alone 2020 and 2023. Yes, empirically and astronomically, there is more than enough proof. The heavens do indeed declare a 13th month, just like the book of Yahazekiel shares. So, why does it matter that a wristwatch and her clock has three hands or witnesses to measure time? Yes, even a man-made timepiece requires an hour hand, minute hand, and second hand to tell correct, precise, and accurate time. Yes, all three hands and or witnesses working together to provide correct, precise, and accurate time. It is no different with the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. It takes three witnesses, the sun, moon, with the stars to tell time, more specifically, Yahuwah's appointed times. And why these calendar models are known as two witness solar lunar models only, as they consciously remove the second hand, which eliminates the ability to tell correct, precise, and accurate time. Yes, indeed, solar lunar two witness models only consciously ignore the third witness of the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. Let us now explore scripturally and astronomically how the stars, the third witness, the second hand, so to speak, of the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah further exposes the equinox deception. Now would be a very good time to consider stopping the video on the visuals to truly grasp the significance of the three witnesses. Because scripture and the Shamaim reveals how the three witnesses of the sun, moon, and stars in creation itself reveals the first day of the first month in the very same manner year after year. The moon at sunrise on the first day of the first month will align itself in proximity to the star known as Abib, which is the brightest star of the branch or sheaf and is called today in English Spica, which is from Latin. It was not always called Spica, though. The ancient called it Samak, Al-Samak for the Arabs, and Samak in Hebrew. Do a scriptural word study on this, as this star and its meaning is the branch, which grows in the spring, and is a sprout, and or shoot, known of the Messiah from the Davidic tree. Because night after night indeed does reveal knowledge, 
because Yahuwah himself numbered the stars and calls them each by name for a reason. Hallelujah that the branch is splendid and esteemed as its fruit of the earth is excellent. Because on a first day, first month event, the full moon is also in proximity to a star known as the foot of the teacher. And simultaneously at sunrise, the sun is in proximity to a star known as Hamal, known as the Lamb. And this first day, first month time signature is free for anyone who is willing to get outside to number their days with the three witnesses from our Father of Lights. While a first day, 13th month time signature, which can be witnessed by anyone in creation, will clearly reveal that the star Abib and our speaker will not be in season for a first day, first month event. Because the full moon will be in proximity to stars known as the Sent One, Maintainer of the Law, and beautiful Yahuwah. At sunrise, with a first day, 13th month, celestial clock event. Yes, the next first day of a 13th month celestial clock event will occur on the pagan day of Saturday, March 31st, 2018 at sunrise. Please get outside and witness it for yourself. So now, let's take a look at a 10-year sample with the sun, moon, with the stars, and prove why the equinox has nothing to do with determining the first day of a first month, let alone a true scriptural 13th month. With the scriptural approach of three celestial witnesses, the first day of the first month in 2014 was on the pagan day of April 15th. Okay, let's plot this 10-year sample out on a chart. And based on the three-witness scriptural approach, we had a first day, 13th month celestial event on, on the pagan day of April 4th, 2015. The next first day, first month celestial event was on the pagan day of May 4th, 2015. The next first day, first month celestial event occurred on the pagan day of April 22nd, 2016. While the next first day, first month celestial event occurred on the pagan day of April 11th, 2017. Bringing the next first day of a 13th month celestial event, which will occur on the pagan day of March 31st, 2018. And why the first day of the first month will commence at sunrise on the pagan day of April 30th, 2018, this year. And hallelujah! Even in Perth, Australia, with the very same star patterns, it will be the first day of the first month, too, on the very same day as in my location, like all locations on Earth. The next first day, first month, celestial event will occur on the pagan day of April 19th, 2019. And the next first day, first month, celestial event will be on the pagan day of April 9th, 2020. While the next first day, 13th month celestial event will occur on the pagan day of March 28th, 2021. The next first day, first month celestial event will occur on the pagan day of April 27th, 2021. With the next first day, first month, celestial event taking place on the pagan day of April 17th, 2022. With the next first day, first month, celestial event, which will occur on the pagan day of April 6th, 2023. 
bringing the next first day, 13th month celestial event, which will occur on the pagan day of March 24th, 2024. And finally, the last first day, first month celestial event in this 10 year sample, which will occur on the pagan day of April 24th, 2024. And do you remember in the presentation on how easy it is to acquire empirical astronomical evidence of all full moon events? If so, look how wonderful this information perfectly aligns with the true scriptural three witness approach in numbering our days and thus correctly orders our months. Hallelujah for the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah that operates in perfect celestial harmony with all three witnesses of the Shamayim in creation. Just like Yazekiel knew, let alone wrote about. And yes, there will still be some naysayers even after all of this undeniable scriptural and empirical astronomical evidence in creation. As they will say, the pagan day of April 30th, 2018 is way too late for a first day, first month scenario to happen. Then why is it where I live in central Ontario, Canada, are they harvesting 21 crops of fall produce during the pagan month of October? And are eight crops of fall produce during the pagan month of November? Oh, I remember. When you number your days with the beast and its equinox deception, all hell breaks loose, doesn't it? But when one numbers his and or her days with the three witnesses of Yahuwah, all the feasts fall perfectly in line in their proper seasons, don't they? And why the equinox deception keeps most of those in the world worshipping in the season of shadows and darkness. Because... Here are some of the small subtleties that will and do come with the equinox deception. As an example, here is a website that embarrassingly attempts to claim that Yahazekiel chapter 1 verses 2 and 3 is written in the third person. So we should entertain the idea that there is no scriptural 13th month as described by Yahazekiel. Can you imagine if we fell for this deception? Because if we actually entertain this third person claim about Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 2 through 3 and actually possibly considered throwing out the scriptural dates because of this claim, then we would have to entertain having to throw out many of the writings of Moshe in the Old Covenant, let alone Matith Yahu, Marcus, Lucas, and Yahukanan as these books are written in a third-person format as well. So, what are the possibilities on why they would attempt to hide the true scriptural 13th month? Well, for starters, they as well promote the equinox deception as they align themselves to the vernal equinox. And they promote a pagan Saturday non-scriptural Sabbath system that promotes and maintains the pagan weekly deity system over and above ignoring the scriptural monthly new moon days thus maintaining the 12 month pagan deity system that ignores the 13th month of Yahuwah do they do this to keep the revenue stream alive and well well, as per the word, we do not have the ability to know what the intentions of their hearts are. Only Yahuwah can do this. All we can do is learn what the world and its world religions do as compared to the scripture 
and what can be seen in the Shamayim. Here is a, another website that had so much promise, but based on their latest comment that due to a concern from one of their readers, they then were influenced to go back to the Equinox model. And again, is this because this corporation wanted to keep the existing membership and the associated annual revenue flow from it? So again, we do not search hearts and or try kidneys. We trust Yahua, who has the capability to do this. And here is the punchline for us all. Do we trust Yahua to set his true scriptural first day, first month, and his true scriptural first day, 13th month, with all three of his witnesses in the Shemaim? And or do we trust man and their world religions with their two witness solar lunar models that exposes the equinox deception. And finally, there has been an observation of late with those that actually take their scriptures out in creation and test and prove what the sun, moon, and stars actually do together in their amazing celestial alignment because they take the time to do their diligence in learning the original names of the stars as Yahuwah named them, to further learn knowledge. So the discussion of late has revolved around why many people will not do this, and if it is because these same people do not take the time to learn the name which is above all names, and or worse yet, ignore it entirely. Whatever the case, we would enjoy hearing further feedback on this scriptural subject matter. We continue to pray in the name which is above all names that these scriptural study videos provide value to you and your loved ones. Until next time, Yahuwah willing, all the best in the name which is above all names.